Today we're going to be doing an in-depth performance test between the brand new iPad Air 4 and the iPad Pro 11 inch in order to answer the widely asked question, is the new iPad Air with a newer processor technically more powerful than the iPad Pro with a older processor? But of course, before we answer this question, I'd appreciate it if you leave a like on this video. Of course, if it warrants a like, I'll leave a comment as well. And if you are subscribed, be sure to click the bell icon as it does help the channel out a lot. So before we jump into any real world testing, I first want to go over some synthetic benchmarks between these two tablets and their respective processors or SOCs. So uh, why not start off with Geekbench 5 to go over single core and multi-core scores. And first up, let's compare single core. We have around 1100 with the iPad Pro and around 1600 with the iPad Air. And this makes perfect sense because these tablets have different processor architecture. Um, so if you don't already know, the iPad Pro packs the A12Z, which is based off the A12X, which is based off the A12 that is now two years old, so um, obviously each single core is going to be less powerful than a newer core introduced with the new A14, which has a new five nanometer architecture, meaning that you know the individual transistors are smaller and more dense on the die. Basically what I'm saying is, each core is more powerful. So, um, you know, there's a difference in score here. And this means like, you know, everyday tasks might feel a little bit snappier. For example, I've had the iPhone uh, 12 Pro and 12 for a day, and I can already notice that, you know, opening apps and just, you know, whizzing through things is just a little bit snappier compared to that of my iPhone 10s and iPhone 11 Pro. Um, so, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I would say both of these tablets have a high enough score to where you're not gonna notice a huge difference, but you know, this tablet is generally gonna feel a little bit snappier sometimes. And that's what I found between this and my actual daily driver, 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which is of course the bigger version of this. However, even though each individual single core with the A12Z is less powerful, there are more of them, meaning you get a higher multi-core score of nearly 4,700 compared to the iPad Air's 4,200-ish. Um, basically, the A12Z is an eight core processor, the A14 is a six core processor. And of course, Apple will probably release or will absolutely release an A14X, which will be eight cores or who knows, maybe even more, but that will be designated for a pro tablet or a laptop or something like that. So we have a more consumer grade, like phone oriented chip within this um, iPad. So even though once again, the single core scores are higher because it's a newer processor, um, this tablet is still more pro because there are more cores, which will you know help you render video faster maybe game better. And from what I can understand, the GPU in here is superior as well, which we can go over with an Antutu benchmark. So here we have Antutu open on here. And the first thing we can see is a grand score here. So 651,000 with the iPad Air and 706,000 with the iPad Pro. So there's a definite lead here, but it's not like a huge amount, I would say here, which is interesting. This is a very interesting nuanced test as I'll show you if you go into the you know, score breakdown. So in the CPU category, it's actually pretty close here. We have a score of 186,000 400 with the A12Z and a score of 183,000 with the A14. So pretty close, especially considering that this is a six core processor compared to an eight core, you know, older gen processor. Um, then with GPU here, this is what I mentioned before. Um, there's definitely a better GPU within the iPad Pro because there's a significant gain here, 365,000 over 250,000. So even if CPU is similar, GPU once again is not. And we might see that reflected in like gaming, but I don't know, I kind of doubt that, but we'll see. Here's something interesting though, and this might be wrong, this might be a fluke, so I'm gonna retest this as I'm editing my video, so I might have like a little correction if I'm wrong in what I'm saying, but even though the iPad Air is four gigs of RAM compared to the iPad Pro six gigs, it gets a superior memory score of around 112,000 compared to 77,000, so, I mean, you would think that the iPad Pro could keep more apps open and there'd be more memory to spare, but apparently this tablet performs better in that regard. Maybe not, I'll let you know, but that's just something I wanted to note here. And then with the UX, um, this makes sense here. Like I said, with the single core scores being higher, UX just means like overall user interface experience. It's smoother with this device, even though it doesn't have 120 hertz or anything, but once again, single core scores do allow you to open apps quicker and maybe have you know better animations and stuff like that. So that does make sense here, but yeah, overall, a nuanced test I thought I would share with you. But maybe you're thinking to hell with benchmarks and maybe you're right, let's do some real world testing now. Let's open up apps first. Let's see what app opens first here. Let's start off with Spotify. And it was like a tad bit quicker with the iPad Air 4 because once again, each individual core is a bit quicker. So let's close this. How about we open App Store? This is kind of a harder app to open sometimes. Same thing here, just a bit quicker with the iPad Air 4. And uh, I hope you know that both these tablets are connected to the same network. So there's no difference here. I have really decent internet as well. Let's open up, how about um, settings? I think this is gonna be about the same. 
yeah, because this is a pretty light app. I mean, nothing to really flex um, your processor's muscles doing. Um, let's open up the camera real quick. Same thing here, just a bit quicker with the A14. Um, and how about, let's try one more here. Something a little bit heavier. How about um, PUBG? So as you can see here, um, this app opened just a tad bit quicker. Even though there's more cores here, I think fewer cores were needed to open this app. And since they're faster, it opened up first here. So there you go. The iPad Air 4 does win app opening speeds. But despite the iPad Air 4 being a bit snappier in everyday tasks, um, the iPad Pro does feel, you know, smoother with its higher refresh rate. And personally, you know, being the sweaty tech nerd that I am, I would take the high refresh rate any day over the slightly more snappy nature of the iPad Air 4. But of course, don't spend more money if you don't have to. I mean, this is 200 bucks cheaper off the bat. So I don't think it's necessarily worth that. And since it's faster, I mean, that's just another reason to buy this if you don't care about high refresh rate to begin with. So now that I have like a normal amount of apps open in the background, I wanna see which tablet handles, you know, background tasks better. So let's go to the settings app first here. Both did not have to refresh, that's good. Um, let's again go to another app, PUBG Mobile. Both had to, no, actually both didn't really have to refresh. They're just at a different stage in the opening process. So that's good. Let's try Spotify. No refreshing there. Uh, what else here? Let's do camera. Nope, nothing there. Uh, let's try LumaFusion. No refreshing. So, um, of course, if you have more and more apps, I would assume that the two gigs of RAM will come in clutch or will make a slight difference. But I mean, like having this amount of apps open in the background, I would say is pretty typical and I'm not noticing really any difference in refreshing. So even though this tablet has two gigs less of overall memory, um, it's still performing equally well. And maybe the better memory performance in Antutu reflects that. Another real world task we can compare is note taking or just drawing in general with the Apple Pencil. Um, so I have two here and we can just kind of do that ambidextrously, that's not even a word. Um, so we can do that. And even though the iPad Pro has a higher refresh rate display, as you can see here, I mean, I'm looking at a monitor in front of me, which is 60 Hertz. I don't see any difference in terms of the latency or anything. And yes, I'm scribbling. I can't write and think and talk at the same time. I will have a stroke on camera. But anyway, yeah, I mean, despite the fact that the iPad Pro does feel a bit more lifelike in that regard when you're writing, because you know, higher refresh rate does make animation or any movement more fluid, the latency or just the overall smoothness is identical between these two tablets. So I wouldn't buy one over the other if you're worried about latency or something. It's the exact same. The Apple Pencil second gen performs beautifully with both, but of course it does look a little bit more lifelike with the iPad Pro. I also want to quickly demo multitasking with these two tablets here so I can, you know, swipe up on the dock here equally quickly as you can see. And then I can drag over an app like Spotify, for example, over to the right. It's the same experience. I'm not noticing any lag or any noticeable difference between these two. Um, once again, even though the iPad Air might be a little more snappy in single core oriented tasks, I mean, I'm not noticing any difference here in terms of the overall smoothness and resizing of the windows. I can even open up another instance of Safari here and drag it right in the middle. And um, as you can see, if I can do this, um, there's just no difference. I mean, they look, they look, they just snap to each corner or a corner equally quickly. Like, yeah, I can't notice a difference here. So if you are big on this, no difference between these two tablets. But now let's begin to flex some of our creative muscles with Lightroom here. I took this photo today with the iPhone 12 Pro, by the way, with the new 52 millimeter telephoto lens. So very happy with the performance so far. But anyway, let's do some minor adjustments here. I'll first start off with the iPad Air. We can, you know, maybe adjust exposure. We can do contrast. We can do, you know, uh, saturation, temperature, all that stuff. Just, you know, like I'm going to go crazy just, you know, doing some adjustments here just to see how fast the uh, tablet can cope. Texture too, you know, I can, you know, drag that around here. Detail, I can do sharpening. So, I mean, it acclimates very quickly to that. Uh, any adjustments here. Let's also do the same with my iPad Pro. So we can do that here. We can do contrast, we can do highlights, we can do, you know, uh, saturation, we can do uh, texture, and how about sharpness as well. So I mean, I'm not seeing really any difference in terms of how quickly these two tablets can, you know, edit your photo, like there's no delay. I mean, you can also um, preview the changes here, as you can see here, both render the differences 
um, equally quickly as far as I can tell. Maybe one's a tiny bit slower. Maybe the iPad Pro is a tiny bit slower because I know that photo editing is more of a single core oriented task, but from what I can tell, identical performance here. So you don't have to buy the iPad Pro to have a better, you know, a photo editing experience, I would say. Next up, let's do some 4K editing within LumaFusion. I have some iPad Air 4 clips that I airdropped from my Mac. Actually, I haven't touched them yet, but we can play them back. And of course, both of these tablets are gonna play them beautifully, you know, like no delay, no lagging. It's gonna play it at, you know, the same frame rate or the original frame rate, 30 FPS here. No problems, I can scrub through, no problem here. Let me add some effects to both or a couple of these you know, clips here. And then we're gonna render and see which tablet performs better. Because generally speaking, I don't, or I haven't noticed like a major difference or any difference in terms of just editing stuff and you know, resizing and adding effects, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm going to go into the effects menu. Let's do like, how about contrast with both here just to spice things up. Maybe I might bring the brightness up with both here. Both react very quickly, if not immediately, to that. And I'm making this look like crap, but I am just adding effects just to make these tablets work a little bit harder. Um, so let's do that. Let's also uh, go to the other clip here. Maybe we can retime if that's possible. So I'll retime. Um, we can do like 80% or 0.8x, 0.8x here as well. And then how about we, you know, add you know contrast once again. And then, uh, you know, bring up the brightness or lower it maybe. How about that? Um, you know, increase contrast. Yes, sure. Saturation as well. And then we can go back to the third clip and then do something else as well. Maybe like speed it up. Although I would probably never do this. Um, or I rarely do this. We can, you know, bring it up to, I don't know, like 2x maybe. And I think there might be like a zooming effect that you can do. So how about I do like zoom in zoom in on here too and then we can go back and then we can kind of scrub through that so like this zooms in nice so now that we have these edited timelines we can do an export test to see which one will finish rendering this project first so we can you know do movie uh, and then choose you know uh, photos here and then make sure it's in 4k how about we increase the quality to ultra why not um oh i'm using the wrong apple pencil here and then we can do H.264. Um, both are like a similar size, 3.4 gigabytes. And um, yeah, let the races begin here. So as you can see here, the iPad Pro is pulling ahead by a bit because again, it has more cores, even though they are individually poor performing compared to that of the six core A14. So even though once again, the processor architecture is way better or significantly better with the newer processor, if you have less cores, you just have less performance. I basically said the same thing twice, but as you can see, it is you know coming to fruition here with this rendering test. But that is not to say that the iPad Air isn't something you should consider if you want to start doing iPad video editing with LumaFusion. I mean, everything else, like the general performance, the scrubbing, the playback is the same as far as I can tell. But you know, if rendering speeds are important to you and if time is money, then the iPad Pro might be the right choice for you. And finally, let's do some gaming here. Let's first start off with Minecraft, which is like a pretty light-ish game. I would say not the hardest to run. I mean, even my iPod Touch with the A4 could run this okay. So we'll make a new creative world here. Um, and we'll continue and we will create and we'll see which one you know renders first of course each Minecraft world is different So this is not the most accurate test ever But still you know generally speaking I would assume that Minecraft worlds are similar in size and whatever I'm just gonna stop talking as I'm not qualified But as you can see it rendered a bit quicker here with the iPad Air Maybe because the world was you know easier to render uh, maybe this seed is more difficult But maybe the a14 is just more geared towards gaming But anyway, let's do some you know walking around here very smooth as you can see we can you know fly and pan down and sometimes apple tablets or apple devices in general just are not smooth with certain games for some reason i've seen like my ipad pros be like acting different like my 11 inch and my 12.9 inch would like be weird and not be the same in terms of smoothness but um i don't know with this i'm not noticing it at all it's very very smooth and let's see if this is the same case here i can you know fly around here and as we saw in Antutu, the GPU is better here, but I don't know, like it's a little bit more stuttery. That's weird. Like I said, like interesting performance between the two, but I mean, very smooth here as well. I would assume this is maybe more of a CPU intensive game. It seems to be the case, at least on PC. And this game has evolved more and more to be, or to resemble more of, you know, like that of Java. So 
I mean, maybe the Minecraft performance is a bit better with the iPad Air, you tell me. But I mean, either way, you're gonna have a great gaming experience with both here. Although I will say, I'm, o I'm noticing some lag with the iPad Pro. Maybe it's just a fluke, maybe it's just like my app. I don't know, but like, seems so far the iPad Air 4 might be a little bit better in this game. And finally, let's play something more heavy like PUBG Mobile, which, you know, of course relies on the GPU and CPU and also the internet connectivity. So we can like run around here. Um, let's also look at the settings that we have on here. So um, we can turn on graphics. Let's do Ultra HD, um, or let's just do HDR here because I can't do Ultra HD. We can do Ultra Graphics here maybe. Um, we can do Realistic as well. Um, let's do that here. Okay, new settings have been. So pretty smooth frame rates with the Air 4. We can run around here as well. I might, I might even be in the same lobby, maybe a little bit less smooth with the iPad Air as I did crank up the you know graphic settings. And as we saw in Antutu, the GPU within the Air or the Pro is you know definitely better, but we'll see here. I'm gonna try to, or attempt to play PUBG um, simultaneously on two iPads. So I've never done that before. I'm gonna unfollow this person. Decent performance on both. I mean, I really enjoyed my time gaming with the um, iPad Air, but I mean, from what I can tell, I think the iPad Pro might be a little bit smoother. You tell me, of course, I can be wrong. My eyes might be deceiving me, but again, it would make sense as the GPU, as I keep saying, is better within the iPad Pro, which has a, you know, you know, more beefy, higher core count with the A12Z, even though the architecture is older. So um, I'll just continue to repeat talking points as tech YouTubers do, but here we are falling towards the earth. This is the exact same map, I think, or very similar. Maybe I'm gonna, like, could I maybe fight myself? I wonder, what if I landed like right next to like my other self here? Wait, is that me? No, can't be. I'm not noticing really any Huge difference, again, maybe smoother with the iPad Pro, I don't know. You guys let me know here, but yeah, from what I can tell, not a big enough difference to like justify buying the Pro or the Air over the other. Like I wouldn't be, like if you want a game with both these tablets and you have a preference for one or the other, I think your experience is going to be really decent with both here. But yeah, once again, you be the judge, you tell me if you can notice a difference here. They have identical settings once again, you know, HDR and I think ultra graphics, not like the actual ultra resolution or anything, but yeah. And that about wraps up this performance test. I know it wasn't perfect, but hopefully I've given you an idea of how these tablets perform synthetically and realistically, and hopefully that helps you decide which one is right for you. That's sort of the central theme of what I do on this channel. I want you to make an informed tech buying decision. And, you know, obviously both these tablets are great. They are meant for different, you know, consumers. I would say, you know, of course the iPad Air is a bit cheaper and I plan on, you know, comparing these two in a full proper comparison either tomorrow or coming soon. So I'll go more into that, but yeah, I mean, Fantastic performance on both. And just seeing the sheer power with A14 makes me super excited to see what's coming with A14X or any variants of the A14 that we might see in Silicon Max and iPads, etc. And that about wraps things up here once again. I hope this video was helpful. And of course, leave a like if you want to comment and subscribe for more content like this. Expect some iPhone 12 content coming from me very soon. I just got these today and I'm gonna be testing them and comparing them to older gen phones and hopefully reviewing them as well. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.